Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to derive an expression for the power spectral density of non-return to zero unipolar format. We know that in a non-return to zero unipolar format, a symbol 1 is represented by transmitting a pulse of amplitude A and duration Tp. This is shown in figure 1 here. Whereas symbol 0 is represented by switching off the pulse or the transmitter itself and this is shown in figure 2 here. Since the transmitter is on only when transmitting symbol 1 and is off when it is transmitting symbol 0, this format is also called as on-off signaling scheme. Coming to the power spectral density, the expression for the power spectral density of a discrete pulse amplitude modulated signal x of t is given by Sx of f equals to 1 divided by Tb, magnitude square of V of f, summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity, Re of n into exponential of minus j 2 pi n f capital T, where Tb is the bit duration, V of f is the Fourier transform of the basic pulse V of t and Re of n is the autocorrelation function of the signal x of t. To start with the derivation, let us start by saying suppose the zeros and ones of a random binary sequence occur with equal probability. Here we have considered a binary source, please remember that. So if the zeros and ones appear with equal probability, then for an unipolar format of the non-return to zero type, we have probability of symbol amplitude AK equal to zero equals to probability of symbol amplitude AK equal to A equals to 1 by 2. Here, this represents symbol 0 and this represents symbol 1. Now, we will start by finding the autocorrelation function first. The autocorrelation function is given by the expression expectation on AK into A of K minus N, where AK is the amplitude of the corresponding symbol. So, when n is equals to 0, we find expectation on a k into a of k minus n equals expectation on a k square because n is 0. Let us now substitute the values of probabilities as well as the appearance of symbols themselves into this expression. So, expectation of a k square is equals to 0 square into probability of a k equals to 0 plus a square into probability of a k equals to a. Now we know the probabilities are equal and are given by 1 by 2. So let us substitute them here. So it is 0 squared multiplied by 1 by 2 plus a squared multiplied by 1 by 2 which reduces to a square by 2. So the autocorrelation function when n is equals to 0 is given by the value a square by 2. Let us now move on and consider the alternative that is when n not equal to 0. Now, coming back to the expression for the autocorrelation function, we have expectation on a k into a of k minus n. So, since n is not equals to 0, we will have to consider two different values for both a k as well as a of k minus n. Now, since this product is a 2 bit combination product, we will have four values as per the values of a k and a of k minus n, and this is shown in the table here. Please note, as I already said, it is a 2-bit combination table. So, we have to start from 0, 0 and end with 1, 1. Now, since the amplitudes of the symbols are 0 and A, wherever you expect a 0 in this table, put a 0. But wherever you expect 1, you have to put A. So, 0, 0, 0, A, A, 0 and A, A. And the product is simply 0, 0, 0 and last one is A square. Then, we will assume that these successive symbols in the binary sequence are statistically independent. If they are independent, then these four values will occur with equal probability and since there are four symbols, the probability will then be equal to 1 by 4. So, the autocorrelation function is now written as expectation on a k into a of k minus n equals, we have 0 appearing 3 times. So, we will write 3 multiplied by the value of the product which is 0 multiplied by the probability of each product which is 1 by 4 plus the last product which is a square multiplied by its probability which is also 1 by 4. By simplifying we note that this is equal to a squared by 4. Well, 
with that we have now found the autocorrelation function for the nrz unipolar type for both n is equals to 0 and n not equals to 0. Let us now write this in one single expression given by r a of n equals a squared by 2 when n is equals to 0 and a squared by 4 when n is not equal to 0. So, we have now completed the computation of autocorrelation function. We now move on to finding the Fourier transform of the basic pulse V of t. Let us look into what is V of t first. We already have said it is a rectangular pulse. So, let us move on to that. Right. So, the basic pulse V of t is a rectangular pulse of unit amplitude and duration t v. Okay. So, the time domain representation of V of t is given here and the Fourier domain representation of V of t is given by this waveform. Now, this is because the rectangular function when applied Fourier transform on will produce a sink function and that is what is given in this expression as well. So, for the basic pulse V of t which has a unit amplitude, we have to simply assume the amplitude equals to 1 here. So, this will also be 1. Please note, a into t will reduce to simply capital T. So, the Fourier transform of the basic pulse V of t is given by t into sin pi t f divided by pi t f. Now, since sin of pi into x divided by pi into x is equals to sink of x, this will reduce to sink of t into f. This is written by modifying the equation here. So, the Fourier transform of the basic pulse V of t is equals to t b that is the bit duration multiplied by sink of f t b. Right. So, now we have found expressions for both V of f as well as R a of n. Let us now substitute these back into the PSD equation and I have given the PSD equation once again here for the convenience. So, S x of f is equals to 1 by T b magnitude square of V of f summation into R a of n into exponential of minus j 2 pi n f capital T. Now, let us substitute for V of f first here from the previous equation. So, it is T b sink f T b. We have now applied that here with square as well as magnitude. Then we have R a of n. But since we have computed R a of n for n is equals to 0 and n not equal to 0, we will now split this part into when n is equals to 0 and when n is not equal to 0. So, coming back to this term first, we have T b sink f T b square. So, Tb in the denominator and one of the Tb in the numerator will cancel out to get Tb sink square Ftb. Then we have R of 0 plus summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity but n not equal to 0 R of n and the exponential part is retained as it is. Let us now take the exponential part inside the bracket but since this part is for n equals to 0, when I apply n is equals to 0 into the exponential term, I find exponential of 0 equals to 1. So, it will simply be 1. That is why even when after taking exponential part inside the bracket, here we have R of 0 only. Plus, for n not equal to 0, this will be retained as it is. And now let us apply the value of R of 0 and R of n from the previous equation. So, when n is equals to 0, it is a squared by 2 and when n is not equal to 0, it is a squared by 4. I will apply that here. So, it is a squared by 2 plus a squared by 4 into exponential part as it is. Now, let us add as well as subtract a value of a squared by 4 to the contents inside the bracket term. That is, here what we have, we have to add a squared by 4 as well as subtract a squared by 4 and this part is written here. So, this part remains as it is, only this is the additional part. So, we have added a squared by 4 as well as subtracted a squared by 4. Now, I am going to rearrange this term. So, what I will do is I will take minus a squared by 4 to here. Then we have this term as it is and the last term also as it is. Now, if you look at this part, what you have is a squared by 2 minus of a squared by 4. This is going to produce a squared by 4 as a result. Then we have plus, looking into these terms, please note we have summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity, but n not equal to 0. Looking into this last term, you see, I can write this as a squared by 4 multiplied by exponential of 0. So, that is exponential of minus j 2 pi and n equal to 0. So, if I take this term, to the summation term, 
then the n now varies from minus infinity to plus infinity and it now includes 0 as well. That is what is written here. Right. Now, let us take this term inside the bracket as well. So, it will be a squared by 4 into tb, which is a squared tb by 4 into sin square ftb plus I will take a square tb by 4 as the common term followed by sin square ftb and lastly I have the summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity and then the exponential part retained as it is. Let us now further simplify this equation but by using the Poisson's formula which is of the form summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity exponential of minus j 2 pi n f t b. If you come back to the previous equation, we have taken this part. So, the LHS of the Poisson's equation is this part and this is equal to 1 by t b summation now a different parameter m varying from minus infinity to plus infinity delta of f minus m by t b where delta of f denotes a Dirac delta function at f equals to 0. Now, if I substitute this equation 8 into the previous equation 7, in this particular part, I will be obtaining only 1 by tb into delta of f. This is because when I come back to the previous equation and see the sinc square ftb, we note that the sinc function has a value of 1 at f is equals to 0 and that every other value of f that is plus or minus 1 by tb plus or minus 2 by tb etc the sinc of ftb is 0. So, since f is equals to 0 produces the Dirac delta function and for every other value of f sinc of ftb will result in 0. So, noting that the Poisson's formula RHS as well as sinc of ftb being 0 at f equal to plus or minus 1 tb etc we have the complete second term except for the constant reduces only to 1 divided by tb into delta of f. So, let us now substitute equation 9 back into the equation 7 second term in the RHS. So, the final expression for the power spectral density of NRZ unipolar format is now given by the first term is retained as it is that is a square tb by 4 sin square f capital tb plus the second term is what a square tb by 4 multiplied by 1 by tb into delta of f. Now, we already have a tb in the numerator here and in the equation 9 RHS we have 1 by tb. So, they cancel each other out. So, what remains is only delta of f. So, the final expression in the second term will only be a square divided by 4 into delta of f. Right. This is the final expression for the power spectral density of NRZ unipolar format. Lastly, let us have a look at the normalized form of equation 10 as in the figure here. Please note we have shown PSDs for multiple formats here. Since we are currently discussing unipolar, this is the one shown by green colored graph. So, you see this is the normalized form of the PSD of NRZ unipolar format. Well, with that, we come to the conclusion on this discussion on the power spectral density of NRZ unipolar format. If you like this video, kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.